Welcome everyone. Uh, it's great to have you here today with me. I have Lynn Kendall, who's the founder of Tommy Academy. So welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much, Amy. It's great to be here. Yeah, awesome to have you. And I'm really looking forward to diving into your business journey and learning a little bit more about you. And I think for, for those of you who are here listening and have just come across you for the first time, um, just to give them a little heads up about what you do. Um, I know that you're a resilience tutor for families. You have 30 years experience working with children. Um, you're also an author and an education specialist. So I know that's kind of the lanes that we're going to stick to today yeah. with this conversation and some of the, the things that have happened to you in your business as well and, and how you actually even got started. So maybe that's a really good place for us to start is, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, having all of this experience in the education sector and, and how it kind of transformed itself into a business for you. That's a very great question because, to be totally honest, I was never going to do this as a business. Yeah. You know, I worked through I worked through my career as a teacher, working in the education and psychology field. Yep, for mm -hmm. thirty odd years. You know, and really enjoyed just working with the children, seeing the results the children were having, and um, just understanding the process of of what they needed. You know, to become resilient in their in their world. So, and what during that pro part of the process, I just found some great discoveries. So, and then I put them into a book and I wasn't actually going to go into business myself. I was actually going to sell my ideas because I'm actually at retirement age. Yeah. And I thought to myself, nope, I'm not going into business. And then friends kept saying to me, no, you've done such amazing work. These were all your ideas. You know, you've come up with some amazing programs, some amazing mathematical formulas. The kids really connect with you. This mm -hmm. is yours. You need to celebrate your work. And I went, mm -hmm. Okay knew nothing about the business world whatsoever. Absolutely yeah. totally nothing. So I thought in for a penny, in for a pound, and off I set on this business <laughs> journey, which was a large one, steep yeah. climb, kind of yep. straight up. Yep. So I hadn't been on Facebook or any mm -hmm. social media before I started. So I've only been in business now three years. Mm -hmm. And I had to very fast learn the world of social media. Mm -hmm. So I very much had to learn how to work. Facebook, Instagram. Um, and they kept saying to me, you've got to do some lives. And I'm going, oh, what are they? You know, <laughs> so what I did with my granddaughter, this kick started as the business journey off. Yeah. Me and my granddaughter did um, lives for 14 days. Mm -hmm. And we did a different activity for children every 14 days. Yeah. And what we did is we turned that into the little book of well-being at the end of the 14 days. Mm. And, it was so, and we were just surprised <laughs> how many people. We started off with, I think, 10 followers. Yeah. By the end of the 14 days, we had about 200 followers. We went, oh, my oh, goodness, cool. the power of yeah. social media. Yeah. Um. And it was interesting working out the different platforms. So I stayed on Facebook, mm -hmm. wasn't going to venture out to Instagram or LinkedIn at that yep. stage. Like I've learned one, I'm going to stick to that for a while, yep. <laughs> That's it. So stuck with Facebook, worked it out. And then everybody could say, no, now you have to be on Instagram. I went, oh, really, Instagram? So I then had to find a VA to work with me at this stage because the business was starting to roll. So I found mm -hmm. a VA and I said, do you know anything about Instagram? She goes, yep, love Instagram. So she does all of Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And, of course, I found you to, to help me with LinkedIn, which has just been amazing. Yeah. So because what I very have learned is that all three platforms are very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how you inter interact with one platform was very different to interacting with enough another platform. So yeah. I was very grateful when I came across you because we've just worked amazingly through the LinkedIn profile, understanding LinkedIn, um, and it has been an amazing journey. So I, I'm very grateful and thank thank you for that part of my part of my business journey because, in all honesty, mm -hmm. it has been a big part of my business journey. Yeah, and um, I connect with new audiences all the time. Yeah. And and thank you, firstly, for that, Lynn, because I too love working with you. And I think it's yeah. great that you've just dived all in, you know, yep. in business. <laughs> I think, you know, um, it's it's one of those things where other people that I speak to all the time, you know, they have these great level of experience or skill yeah. set or knowledge, and they can find themselves just sort of sitting on all of this experience <laughs> and knowledge. And so That's I really um, love your friends for sort of pushing yep. you in that direction to say, you know what, you should actually use this. And for some yeah. people, it can take them, you know, years and thinking about it before they even start. So I love that you just sort of dived and went all in um, yeah. to start. And, and why social media? Like, how did that play a part for you in the beginning? Why did you want to get started on doing it even in the first place? Yeah. Lots of people told me that was the place to go to actually get started. But it was also mm -hmm. about sharing my knowledge. So yeah. I just want to connect with more and more children and families in mm -hmm. terms of resilience. So in terms of what I do 
through the Resilience Tutoring Program is I teach children how to connect their emotions, energies and thoughts to every experience that they have because when they actually do that, that's when they become resilient. Mm -hmm. So I found the power of social media was then, I was then able to connect with like-minded people as well because that was awesome for me Mm -hmm. and I met some amazing people and as it turned out, I met some people in UK, Scotland, Greece and Switzerland. They love what I do, I love what they do and they ran the programs for me over there as well. Yep. So it's just been awesome for collaboration with like-minded people, but also finding those families and children that are really struggling with their resilience. Yeah, I think it's great when you've got that drive just within the business. You know, it's not just about selling as many programs as you can. Like that's, that's obviously a part of it. I know you have great programs that you work with teachers and schools and parents and everything as well. So you've got yep. you know, really tailored programs there. Um, but it's more so around making that impact. So even if people don't work with you, they can get some sort of value out of your expertise. Absolutely. And it's all about connection for me. One of Mm -hmm. my values is connection because I just love connecting. And I found that through social media, I could connect with different audiences right from my computer at home. So that was awesome. And how is that experience for you, like personally? You know, I know for some people I speak to, there's a part of us when we sort of go out on our own and we, we take that big leap of faith like you did Um, in yourself and your business, Um, was there any sort of trepidation for you or any kind of resistance that you felt in the beginning to to starting to be seen a little bit more? Oh, absolutely. The whole social, I mean, I was used to presenting and speaking at different events, but they were all very much live events, you know, so you had the audience there that you could sort of, um, you know, work with all the time. But when you got on the Facebook Lives, you went, I'm actually talking to myself. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And and it was tricky at first because I didn't really know what my audience needed to hear either. So mm-hmm. I was just telling them everything that I know and love. Mm-hmm. And then I needed to work out what did my audience want to hear from me as well. So mm-hmm. it became tricky in that st- sense, knowing what content to put out. Yeah. when to put it out, and, and who was I actually speaking to. So, you know, there was a lot of trial and error process mm. throughout the whole entire process, and it was great, you know, meeting you and other people as well because they then gave me a framework around what does that actually look like, sound like, and feel like to mm. put out all of that content out there um, yeah. and to be seen. And mm. it's not the fear of, of not being seen or not being known, but mm. more about what, what is it that I really want to communicate mm-hmm. and what is it that my audience really wants to hear? Because I can talk all day about my topics, yeah. you know, of resilience and well-being. Um, but, yeah, it's it's creating that content that gets that pure connection with the people. Mm. And I love that because I think when we're in our own worlds, we can get so wrapped up and we love our product and we love our service. Yes. We know we can help people. We know we can make an impact. And it comes from, you know, what we want to share and what we want to do. And oftentimes I love the way that you sort of, you know, flip that on its head and reframe that because we actually have to be thinking the opposite way and thinking about, well, what does our market and our potential future clients, what do they need to see from us? What do they need to hear from us yeah. um, in order for them to reach out? you know, That's and right. feel attracted to to wanting to connect and, and work with us or collaborate in different yeah. senses as well. So I think, yeah, thinking about it the opposite way is um, yeah. the right, you know, to do that, but it's not easy. No, no. The, the whole journey was is it was interesting. It was definitely a steep learning curve up. But I can honestly say now I've enjoyed that learning curve. Mm. You know, I've I've enjoyed connect because I would never have connected with half the people that I've actually connected with now. So I'm very thankful that I, I learned the skill yeah. and that I'm able to connect with a wider audience and really understanding what their needs are mm. um, and how I can help them. Yeah. And how's that impacted you in the business? So, you know, working with people like myself on platforms like LinkedIn, how has that sort of made the impact for you? It's made a huge impact. I mean, I couldn't believe the impact in all honesty. Here I was sitting down thinking, oh, yep, I'm going to start a business and off I go with all my ideas. Um, Yep, I had written my programs and my books at that stage. Mm. Um, But I would never have considered in a thousand years that I'd be connecting with people overseas, let alone they love what I do and Mm. and they run my programs over there. Like I would never have guessed that I would have had an international market before I had an Australian market. Um, But even in Australia, people have really embraced the concept of resilience resilience you know and being able to share that message so now I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot more children and delivering a lot more courses so the impact Mm -hmm. to my business has been huge yeah it's gone out of the water in terms of what I could possibly think was possible at that point in time 
Yeah, yeah. So if you could sort of rewind the clock, Lynn, to when you were first starting out and you were like, oh, I'm not too yeah. sure about this, what what sort of advice would you give? And maybe there's someone listening to this who's sort of in that same mindset around not sure if they want to take the leap. What would you say to them having sort of come out the other side now? Yeah, um, it's just amazing. It's been an amazing journey and, and definitely do it, you know, because maybe I would have sat here in my old age and regretted that I hadn't shared my knowledge as widely, widely mm-hmm. as I could have done. But I've just, imp- I've just loved the business journey. Like I've just embraced the whole learning about business, knowing what business now looks like and just love the learning journey. So I would say start, definitely go ahead, take the leap of faith. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sure you'll learn to love the journey as much as I have. Yeah, awesome. And what are you most excited about, like with the work that you're doing now with with your clients and with the schools and with teachers, like what in the kids, of course, you know, all of them benefit from that, um, the different ways that you work. So what are you most excited about now that, you know, you sort of hit that level of success in your business and you're looking to take it to that new level? What does that look like for you? And, you know, we've already gone international. So (laughs) what is next for you, Lynn? I'm going to create the resilience revolution next. Yes. So what the re- resilience revolution looks like, sounds like and feels like, is schools coming together. So I'm going to get some um, some speakers to come along with me as well and share their resilience stories because I believe that we all have resilience stories. Me running my business and starting out, while that has turned into a big resilience story, it's in lots of ways. It also, mm-hmm. there's lots of small stories along that way and I just love capturing everybody's resilient stories Mm -hmm. so I'm actually looking for people to come and help me write a book as well and share their resilient stories Mm -hmm. so I'm going to invite schools to come along and we're going to celebrate resilient stories so Mm -hmm. so you know to me it's about creating a resilience revolution because I honestly believe that we're here in this generation to help our young people prepare for the next generation I also want to create um, international resilience day Mm -hmm. because there's lots of national and international days but there isn't actually international resilience day yet and Mm -hmm. I'd love to see that shine yeah fantastic so we're not playing small anymore are we (laughs) <laughs> that went out the door. A that was out years. the door week one with us, wasn't it? <laughs> it has actually, yeah. Um, and it's great being on LinkedIn now and um, connecting with schools and teachers and really yeah. seeing them embrace what resilience is all about. Yeah. And what have you noticed, I guess, just sort of having on having been on the different platforms, what's one of the things that you've sort of noticed with LinkedIn? Maybe it was a, a challenge or an opportunity or something that was a little bit different that you sort of discovered once you sort of dove into it a little bit more? Um, You definitely have different conversations. Mm. You know, um, I've always played in the professional world because I've always worked in schools, um, both in the education and psychology field. So having a different professional conversation has just been amazing. Mm. And just seeing the different ways people embrace what you've got to teach. So Mm -hmm. it's been a really eye-opener noticing that um, and I don't have to do Facebook lives <laughs> yes <laughs> so I love the different functionalities I actually really love the newsletter so I've created a newsletter which you helped me with which was awesome yep. and I love helping the audience and being able to communicate more in depth about what I know to to the audience on LinkedIn so we're on Facebook and um, Instagram they don't have that same level of professional because their audience is different so it's been really exciting to engage with that different level of audience and sharing my knowledge in a different way yeah that's awesome and you mentioned a little bit earlier that you know building a team has been part of your journey as well in the business and you know quite early on you'd recognize that okay if I'm going to run these social channels you know to make the impact that I want there's only one of me and there's only so <laughs> much it. amount of time in the day when you're delivering programs and, you yeah. know, um, teaching other teachers how to deliver on your behalf, then it can get a yeah. little bit tricky. So um, what was that decision like for you in terms of bringing on a virtual assistant first? And then how have you kind of found that balance for you with managing the right amount of team and the business? And and I'd just love for you to talk to that for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I love having my VA. I don't know how I managed to, to go without her in the first place. You know, she has just been totally amazing in terms of helping me being able to navigate my way through social media, making it so much easier for me. Um, you know, we just get together once a month. We talk about the direction that we're going in. 
the content mm -hmm. that we want to deliver and mm -hmm. off she goes. She creates most of my social media now. I come back and approve it and I just go, oh, job done. Yeah. Well, that was actually taking me, you know, quite a considerable amount of time. Like I was lost. I would say I was lost in um, social media content, you know. Yeah. I was lost in direction. Yeah. So it's been awesome having a team member because we can bounce ideas off each other. You know, she brings a new dimension to my social media as well, which is just mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and yeah, it's, it's freed me up totally to be able to do to write the books. <laughs> yeah, as she said, write all that content and pass it along <laughs> to me, which I do, and it's just awesome. So we're just yeah. a great team member. It's just mm -hmm. a great team feeling, mm -hmm. um, and we worked so amazingly together to bring the content together in, in a great way to our audience. Yeah, that's awesome, and I think it's great that you trust that it'll get done. And, yep. and I know for some business owners, you know, myself in, included, it can be difficult sometimes to like let yeah. go of things because our business is our baby, right? For many Absolutely. of us. Absolutely. Um, and so I think that's great that you found that a really cool, cool balance um, with that team member as well. Yeah. Where do you think the business will be in another, like, let's just say, two years' time? Where would you uh, like I it to be? I honestly believe the sky's the limit because another part of the business too is to find other people now to become resilience tutors. So, yep, mm -hmm. I'm doing all of the groups online with families of a night time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's time for me to stop the teaching process and to give that rein over to somebody else as well. Yeah. So very soon, actually, in the next few months, we'll be advertising for other people to come so I can teach them to become resilient students because, you know, the goal is to reach as many children as we can yeah. um, in, in this generation to help them understand what resilience is for them mm. um, in, ev in whatever shape that looks like. So, you know, I no longer have a ceiling on my business you know, that ceiling is now open, which is really, really exciting. And I'm really looking forward to the expansion, bringing on resilience students and, and really bringing resilience into the spotlight, because I honestly believe that we're ready to be proactive in terms of our mental health. Let's love our mental health. Let's love and embrace who we are as people and, and embrace the whole growth journey. Yeah. Because then I think our young people, um, We'll stop seeing the struggle as much because they are seeing the struggle in schools. And that's what's motivated me to do what it is that I do mm -hmm. um, is because, you know, I do believe obviously to go through resilience, you definitely need tricky life experiences. You yeah. definitely need to know how to move through them, though, with ease and grace. Go, I just had a tricky life experience and I just learned this. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's a whole entire part of being resilience um, and I'd love to see the kids really grow as young people of their next generation. I love that and uh, your passion for your work shines through Lynn and yeah. everything that you do I know when we're even you know creating content and things as well I know that your, your passion for what you do just really yeah. shines through and you're making such a, a big impact in the world and I think that you know the more teachers that you know can learn through you um, and then you know deliver um, the programs out there to to children, um, yeah. the more the better um, because you. your work is really needed. So yeah. it's just awesome to hear hear your journey and your story. And if there's someone that's sort of listening to this and they might be thinking to that they want to dip their toes into growing their business or using LinkedIn in some way and they may be considering working with us, um, what would you say to them? What would your advice be? Definitely work with Amy uh, <laughs> um, because, you know, it is about dipping your toe into the water and then having somebody like you to be able to um, do that journey with because I would have been totally lost had I not found you because I wouldn't have known what direction to go in, how I was going to do it, what content I needed, and you've really helped me through that process. So just being able to meet up, bounce ideas off each other has just been such an invaluable part of the process for me I mean I can't thank you enough in that sense because it really has I mean my profile started off with about 100 people you know yeah. even knowing how to grow your network has just been an, an awesome part of the process for me so that's um, it which is and really where are we at now then we started off with 100 where are we at today? <laughs> we're up to about 450 can't wait for the next 100 um, but, but do you know what the exciting part is though is that people are now finding me and want to connect with me so it's mm -hmm. not about mm -hmm. sending out friend requests anymore yeah. I get friend requests daily now and I go yeah. awesome people actually love it and know what I do now because my profile is professional it's clearly communicated um and now they can easily find me and know exactly what it is that I do yeah. and, and what I'm passionate about so that's been a really a, an amazing part of the process so thank you yeah awesome well done and uh yeah I've loved seeing your progress and your journey and your yeah. network continue to grow um and you being able to make a bigger impact in the world as well which is just so so awesome any any sort of parting advice for others that you know maybe at the start of their their journey and just do it 
take a leap of faith, have a go, and um, I'm sure you'll love the journey as much as as I have. I can't imagine now not ever being in business now, mm-hmm. and I can't imagine this not, never not being part of my life. So I'm very thankful. Awesome. That's great. And for those that are wanting to connect with you um, and to reach out and to learn more about the work that you're doing, um, where's the best place? Where can they go and find you? On the social media under the Resilience <laughs> Tutor. Totally a trick question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, trick question. Um, all on the socials under this Resilience Tutor and, of course, my website, resiliencetutor.com.au. Love to connect. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Lynn. I've really enjoyed sort of diving into your business journey, learning more about it. I think, um, you know, you are resilient in yourself um, <laughs> in, in getting through business and taking that leap. And I know that the work that you do um, is super important. So, yeah, it's great to great to chat today. Yeah, terrific. Thanks very much.